Hey guys, welcome to RenderEye. So today in this video, we're gonna learn how to make this little ambient scene in Blender 2.8. Note that this is going to be an intermediate tutorial, so I would recommend that you have a basic understanding or well, you can say a fair understanding of how things work in Blender because this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this scene. But don't worry, I'll go over pretty much everything that I did to make this scene. And also just a friendly reminder that if you enjoy watching any of my videos, then please consider subscribing as it helps a lot. And you also get notified about my future videos. And I'm also planning on doing live streams soon on my channel so if you are interested in that and you want to see me work live then hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get notified about each of my videos and also exactly when I go live. Alright enough of that let's actually get into the video. So if you've seen my previous video about making an atmospheric scene in Blender 2.8, you'd find a lot of resemblance in this scene as well. I've played around with different styles and I think it's safe to say that I feel the most comfortable with making such stylized scenes. So in this scene, we mainly have this bird who was sitting on an electric cable and then decided to fly off towards the woods that is on its left. There were different versions of the scene that I experimented with but it all started with making the pole. So what we have here is pretty simple. The pole is a huge cylinder, then we have this cube with a slight curve in the front face. Then we have these two joints, which is just one cube on one side mirrored over to the other. Then I deleted the top and the bottom faces and added a bevel to the edges to get some extra topology for the next step, where I select this bottom edge ring and turn it into a circle by clicking W to bring up this menu and going to loop tools option and selecting circle. This will turn the edge loop into the circle, giving that nice fade of the blocky shape to the smooth cylindrical shape. I think it is also important to note that I'm not modeling this out of my memory of electric poles. I obviously use some references to get an idea of the shape. I use a software called PureRef which basically lets you manage all your references in a minimalistic infinite board. I have a second monitor so it's really handy to keep all the references in that monitor while I work on my main one. I'll leave the link to this software in the description below along with the project so that you can download it and open it up and get all the references to start working on your own scene. But yeah, after I got this base shape of the pole done, I added these terminals on the wooden board that we just created. This is also pretty simple, just a cylinder with a little notch near the base just for that satisfaction of adding it. <laughs> then I added another little cylinder on the top part of the pole that is sticking out with the cap fill set to nothing which does not fill in the top and the bottom edge loops with faces, giving us this hollow shape to work with. Then we can add a solidify modifier to add some thickness to this hollow mesh. Now I noticed there was this little detail in the reference image where there were these cubes surrounding the ring, maybe as an attachment of some sort. But we can just add one cube and then use a radial array to loop it around the cylinder. To make this simple and easy to manage for us, let's select both the cylinder and the cube and go to their local view by pressing slash on our keyboard which is the one left of the shift key. Then let's add a array modifier on the cube, set the count to 4 because that's what we need. Turn off relative offset and turn on object offset because we want to control this through an empty object to get the array loop. So we're going to create an empty object that will control the array. After that you can just select the empty object for the object offset, move and rotate the empty object till you get it to loop around the cylinder. Now let's press slash again to get back to the global view. Now before we add the outer ring, I'm just going to apply the array because I know I'm not going to change it later on. This is a destructive workflow since you won't have any control over the count of the array or the position. But it's fine in this case because we know exactly what we want. After that, we can just delete the empty objects, select these two objects, duplicate them once to get these two rings. Now the wires coming out from the terminal connected to the cylindrical... Uh, transformer? I don't know. And it doesn't even matter because it doesn't really appear clearly in our final render. But it's good to create it if you decide to render from a different angle. I used a bunch of Bezier curves for the wires and changed them up a little every time I duplicated them to the next terminal. Then I just took all of the endpoints of the Bezier curves and made a cylinder with some edge loop extrusions and put it at the end of the wires like so. Finally, we have the cables going through the terminals over to the other pole, which is just an instance of this pole that I created by pressing Alt plus D. These are also Bezier curves, just that I have three segments, two on the ends and one in the middle. I made the middle one straight and tweaked the handles of the endpoints to get that soft curve of dangling look for the wires. That's half of our scene right there. Let's add our little bird now. Before we do that though, let's create a separate collection where we are going to put our bird model just for organizing our project a bit and to isolate it when we need it to. 
Now let's open the bird project. I got it from BlendSwap where the bird was made by Martin Eupidis and rigged by Hypnosis, I assume. I'll leave the link to this project in the description, so rest assured. This project comes with an awesome rig that you can just use to easily pose the model. So I did exactly that. I tried to pose the bird in a way that it looks like it's about to fly off from the wire. So I looked at reference photos of how birds look like when they're about to fly. Mainly crows because I think this model looks more like a crow than a woodpecker. But before you pose the bird make sure that you have turned on auto keying down here so that the pose is baked into an animation of one frame of the bird well that's how i did it anyway i'm sure there are better ways of doing it that i'm not aware of anyway after doing that we can just go to the object mode select everything and then deselect the camera because we don't need that then press ctrl plus c and copy the objects over to our main project now let's select the stuff that we don't need and put it in an extra collection called whatever now we can select the bird with its rig and set it on the cable as such. If needed, we can also do some minor tweaks to make sure that the pose looks proper and realistic. Then let's set our viewport to right about here, add a camera and press Ctrl plus Alt plus numpad 0 to snap the camera to the view and then we can tweak it till it looks nice. As always, I'm using the composition of rule of thirds which if you don't know anything about, you can watch this video I've made about showcasing your models where I go over in brief the importance of composition. But yeah. Let's imagine two sets of parallel lines crossing each other like this, where the points of intersection is going to be our main focus in the scene. So I positioned the camera so that the bird is around this intersection point. Now we can see that this left area over here is quite empty. So we're going to add a bunch of trees there, fill up the space and also add to the story of the scene of the bird flying off to the magical forest. I took the trees from blend swap projects I used in my last atmospheric scene video because I absolutely love these assets. They're the perfect balance between stylized and realistic. Make sure to add trees on both sides to fill up the empty void, mainly focusing on the left area you could also use a particle system but I like to manually place stuff like these for extra control and since this is a stylized scene we can have a lot of creative freedom. So that's all we have for the modeling side of things, let's now move on to the materials. Let's start off with the materials for the pole because this is the only model in the scene whose textures are the most visible. I used the wood texture I got off of cctextures.com for the wooden parts of the pole. For the metal parts I used the black metal texture that I got from CC0 textures again. I set them up normally like with any other PBR material with the diffuse texture connected to the base color input of the principal shader, the roughness texture to the roughness input with the color space set to non-color because this does not have any color data that might be useful to us and also the the normal map connected to the normal input passing through a normal map node to convert it. For the wires, I used a rubber material which is just a principal shader with the color set to a dark gray and roughness to 0.4 for the shorter wires and 0.6 for the longer wires just for some variation. You could also spend more time using a texture for these wires but I decided not to do it as it isn't necessarily that important of a step. Now comes the bird and honestly, I didn't even bother using any external textures for this bird since it is going to be a silhouette. So we only only have very simple material setups with the base principal shader for the bird. Finally, we have the trees and believe it or not, I didn't add any materials to the trees because they already come with the project from Blendswap so that saved us a whole lot of time. There isn't going to be any subsurface scattering effect on the leaves but we don't really need it in this case so there is no problem. Now for the lighting, we have set the background color to completely black to have no interference with our lights. Before we add our lights, I'd like to set up a basic volume to preview our lights interacting with our environment better. So for that, I added a massive cube covering the whole scene including the camera. Then I removed the principal shader and added a principal volume shader to the volume input of the material output. Then I set the color to a grayish white density to 0.03 and anisotropy to 0.5. You're not going to see anything of course, but it will look good once we have all our lights in our scene placed. Speaking of which, the night bluish color is emitted by a really really huge area lamp we have on the left emitting most of the light in the scene. The color of this light is set to this blue color, power to 8000 watts and the shape to a disc. Then we have a bit of a smaller light at the back of the bird which is a very desaturated blue, almost a white. Power set to 3000 watts and again a disc shape for the holy awesomeness. Then I copied over this huge key light to the right, kind of pointing down at the bird with an intensity a bit lower, around 5000 watts. 
spots. We also have some smaller accent lights shining from the bottom with a fiery orange color and a power of around 200 to 800 watts to imitate people enjoying a bonfire at the ground or something I guess. We mainly have two of these in our scene, one below the electric utility pole to add some accented lighting to the pole separating it from the rest of the objects and the other light is between the woods here just to add some interest to the forest making it look magical I suppose. Now before we hit render, we want to set up some little things. We want to add some depth of field to the camera, basically allowing it to focus on the bird and blurring the rest of the image. What we can do to get that effect is to select the camera, just go down to the object settings and here we will notice this depth of field option. Just turn it on and now let's create an empty object, change the snapping options to vertex right here and then press G to move it and hold control while doing so to snap it to the head of the bird. Now let's set the focus object to the object that we just created and go to the app aperture settings and change the f-stop to 1.4 and the blades to 6. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that the camera's focal length is set to 42mm. Not that important of a detail I guess, but it affects the depth of field so I decided to let you know. Now we can just change the sample count to around 256 and hit render. This will give you a noisy render but you can use the denoise node in the compositor to denoise your image which works super well with these type of scenes. If you don't know how to use the compositor, I also have a tutorial on that which you can just check out right here. I also did some post processing on this scene, just played around with the contrast and the brightness and the color tones a bit and added some particles and dust and scratches on top of the base render to add that final touch. And that's how you make an ambient scene in Blender 2.82. So I hope you enjoyed this video and or learned something from it. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure you write a comment down below. I will have this scene posted on Gumroad so if you want you can just get it from there and break it down do whatever you want you can also support me on patreon by donating some money to help me keep making such videos and also to get cool rewards according to the tier of your pledge meaning that you can also get this scene and all of my past and future scenes for free I also want to thank Trelligan for being kind enough to support me on patreon and hey if you decide to follow this tutorial to make your own scene tag me on Instagram at renderides to let me see it because I love seeing what you guys guys create and also have a chance to get featured. You can join our discord server if you want to get feedback on your work and hang out with cool artists. Links to everything will be down in the description. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and I hope you stick around for the next video.